So good morning, everyone. We'll uh, begin shortly. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. For the one who just joined, we'll be uh, starting shortly. Thank you. All right, so we just wait one more minute and uh, I will kick off uh, the Today Tech Talk Lunch and Learn. All right. So first of all, um, thank you uh, for joining us today for the Tech Talk Learn Channel at Google Around Meet. I want to uh, say good ma morning to everyone and introduce myself. So my name is Ingrid Gonzalez, and I'm Google Cloud Sales Director based out of New York. First of all, and on behalf of the Google Cloud family, I would like to thank you for joining us today. I hope that everyone, including your loved ones and new colleagues, are doing well during this challenging period. This Lunch and Learn is part of the weekly series, and our goal is to engage with our customer and serve you better. When our offices first closed due to COVID-19, we were able to seamlessly transition over 100,000 employees from working from the office to working from home. The tool that was key to this transition is Google Meet formerly named Google Hangout. Our speaker today has helped many customers with this transition, and we would like to share with you our learnings. I'm excited to introduce you Rob Cayley. Rob is currently a customer engineer at Google Cloud. Rob has spent six years at Google, helping customers with their digital transformation in all areas, from Google Cloud Platform to G Suite. Most recently, he spent time at Google X, helping bring chronicle security to market. Prior to Google, he helped G Suite for Bill Money in college and was Google Cloud first intern. He joins you today as a G Suite customer engineer, excited to talk about how G Suite can help your organization to work from home. At the end of today's session, we have time for questions. Please type a question on the right of the live stream on YouTube Live and Rob will address them at the end of today's talk. Without waiting, Rob, I will let you take it from here. Thank you very much. Great, thanks, Ingrid. Uh, really excited to be here today to talk about uh, Google Meet and, and really how we leverage that along with the rest of the G Suite 
uh, to work from home seamlessly and how you guys can do that too. Um, so just to kind of level set and understand what you're getting yourselves into for the next about 40 minutes. Uh, first, we're just gonna talk about what's changed, right? With a work from home world and kind of what we have done um, as well as some of the trends that we're seeing. Uh, we're then gonna spend the bulk of the time taking a tour of Meet, both talking about the features that we've released recently, what's been part of the platform for a long time. And then we're gonna take a, a little bit of a step back and a, take a deep dive into security as we know it's top of mind for so many folks uh, who are looking at a video platform. We're then gonna talk about two other main components um, that have had some pretty big announcements uh, around uh, the G Suite. Uh, one's gonna be with Docs and Drive and how we leverage that in tandem with um, Google Meet as a way to truly collaborate um, both when we're on the call and off the call. And then finally, uh, I'm just going to touch on a few new announcements with Google Sites, uh, which is really the home for content uh, across Google uh, and really how we've made it easier for you uh, as a, a user, either as an admin or an end user, to stand up beautiful looking sites and be able to share content with your team's organizations. Uh, and then finally, as Ingrid mentioned, right, we really love questions. I want this to be a dialogue. So if we could spend you know, the last 20 minutes just answering questions, I would love to do that as well, as I can see them kind of pop up in the chat here on my other monitor. So first, kind of thinking about a work from home world and, and how Google kind of came into this and how we were able to, as, as Ingrid mentioned, seamlessly move 100,000 of us um, to, to wherever we wanted to quarantine. Uh, and, and just to take a mention of this, there are still a number of Google employees that do have to go into the office every day. And we really thank those kind of essential workers who are making sure that our networks are still running uh, and our data centers are still able to serve all of these amazing tools. Um, however, with that said, the vast majority uh, of our uh, users have um, work, started to work from home. And, and really, Meet is the, the anchor point from that, but, but it is so much more uh, than that, right? So if we think about the full G Suite, um, you have things like Gmail and Calendar, which uh, you know is an easy web-based solution. I can answer emails on my phone just as easily as I can um, off of my Chromebook. We then have Calendar, again, kind of facilitating um, these meetings, although we will talk about how you don't necessarily need Calendar to leverage Meet. Um, and then the collaboration suite itself, right? It, it's so much more than just docs. It's um, sheets, it's slides, it's forms. We use all these tools uh, as we need them um, to collaborate. And, and we'll again touch on that a little later. And then for the, the admins out there, right? The ability um, to truly use a born in the cloud solution, not just for the, the end user tools, but also all the security controls and policies are all set in one web-based console. So as your employees go um, to their homes or wherever they're quarantining, um, you don't have to be worried that if you decide to change a setting, change a policy, right, that's pushed out instantaneously uh, to all those users wherever they may be, uh, as well as the ability to do diagnostics and get reporting, right? It's all um, real time to near real time, and we'll touch on that a little bit uh, later. Um, but again, right, the, the main component of this is going to be um, Google Meet and, and why video first, right? And it's because Google's always had this culture. Um, Going back to when I was an intern almost seven years ago, right? I was blown away to see every single conference room I walked into had a camera and uh, microphone, TV, the whole setup so that we could always bring in whoever we needed. Uh, and prior to, to me even joining, right? Google was one of the largest um, consumers of legacy video conference solutions out there. And um, what happened was about 10 years ago, we took a look at that and said, well, why don't we build something that's a little more lightweight, a little easier for all of us to use so we don't have to go to a meeting, but we could actually, or meeting room, but we could all do this um, on our devices. And that's really where Hangouts came from was the idea that Googlers should be able to meet anytime, anywhere, any place, uh, and do it as if you were right down the hall from them in the office. And so what we see with video meetings is, a uh, much better team collaboration, right? I'm able to just quickly talk out my ideas. We have a very strong video on culture. So it's uh, it's a rare, rarity to see a meeting where everyone uh, you know, is, is off camera. Um, really that face-to-face -face contact truly helps uh, you build connections, uh, even if you're not in the same room. And uh, you know, anecdotally, this has been true for me working on a number of different teams at Google. There's been times where my manager has been two time zones away 
Uh, and yet I feel like, you know, he, he works down the hall from me um, just because of how, how much we leverage this face-to-face -face video type conferencing. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, a, a hurdle to get over as, uh, as we've seen many uh, sales reps and, and customer engineers and other employees join the Google Cloud organization. Uh, they generally start with that kind of, oh, I'll, I'll come off mute, but I'm not going to turn my camera on. But within you know a month or so of them understanding the benefits of that face-to-face -face type talking, um, we start to see uh, you know those cameras turn on very quickly. Um, and then we'll we'll touch on this a little more when we talk about docs. But but more productive and effective meetings really come out of the the not just the video conferencing component, right? Anyone can talk to each other, but it's the way that we also share out Google Docs or sheets or slides and are able to collaborate during those meetings in real time, having one person share their screen and everybody else working um, really helps keep folks on task. Um, now to take a step back and talk about what's happened in recent months, uh, if we look at kind of how the world has changed, right? This is um, even a few weeks old and I imagine the second pie chart's a little larger, but we're looking at uh, a, a lot more employees kind of now starting to work from home uh, after COVID-19. And this trend, you know, while is coming out of um, very unfortunate circumstances, there is a lot of research that's been done um, by Global Workplace Analytics and others that actually has shown that uh, allowing folks to work from home for at least some period of time during the week, whether that's a few days a week, uh, can save a considerable amount of money, uh, not to mention uh, for those who are more environmentally conscious, um, right, the, the carbon footprint is reduced as someone uh, only commutes from, say, their bedroom to their office, uh, opposed to driving across town or what have you. And so really allowing folks to work on their time and even having a lot of kind of heads down time that they're not interrupted um, outside of their scheduled meetings throughout the day uh, can provide a lot of uh, benefits um, there for productivity. And as I mentioned earlier, right, we were, we were talking about, um, you know, Google uh, having pioneered kind of this video-based meeting, um, always having being done uh, via the Chrome browser. Um, really, we've done doing this for a long time and have a lot of experience in both uh, the tool set as well as scaling the tool set. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, I know there has been, uh, you know, uh, some confusion in the marketplace around uh, all the different names, and, and obviously, you know, Google does operate a number of different uh, applications. Uh, really, this transition to Google Meet is is a, a real big effort to try to consolidate that and um, make it very clear that we have, uh, you know, one premier enterprise class video conferencing solution, uh, and that is very simply being named Google Meet. Um, but there has been tools in the past, uh, Hangouts Meet, um, Hangouts, and a number of others, uh, but we're all kind of consolidating into one name going forward. Um, so now this is a, a pretty interesting kind of up into the right graph um, showing that you know we are now seeing um, about 2 billion minutes per day uh, of traffic happening over Google Meet. Um, another interesting data point was that about 30 days ago or so, we were um, talking about how there was 2 million new users coming onto the platform every single day. Uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, Sundar Pichai, our CEO, mentioned during the earnings call that uh, we now are onboarding 3 million new users every single day to Google Meet. Um, and so what I can tell you is that while this chart is from the February, March timeframe, I'm sure when we publish the next one um, for uh, March to April, that will be just even more exponential growth than what we're seeing from a traffic perspective. Um, and we'll talk about this when we get in a little more detail on the infrastructure side. But really, because of how Google has architected and runs its own network and its own data centers, this type of scale doesn't worry us, which is um, truly a kind of a unique and, and very nice place to be um, in the market. And so just know that, you know, as you bring your organization online, uh, we are here, we have the capacity and are ready to serve your needs. And so before we get into the individual topics, we'll talk about uh, kind of a couple other things. So important content to follow. Um, if there's one uh, place that you go look after this meeting, um, it's going to be the Google Cloud blog. Um, this is where we uh, announce kind of all the new uh, product features that are coming to meet um, and the rest of G Suite, uh, and not to mention kind of other cool things. So first and foremost, um, this was now uh, about a month old, March 3rd, I believe the date, uh, was when we first announced uh, that all of the enterprise class features that we have in Google Meet are available for all G Suite SKUs. 
Uh, and so what that means is everything I talk about today um, will be available to you if you're a G Suite user until September 30th. And I'll actually talk about some of the differences um, going forward as we, we kind of move past the fall into the new year. The other one, which is brand new as of this morning, um, is that we uh, Google Meet is, is not just for um, enterprises. Um, we are also now going to start offering Google Meet as part of Gmail uh, itself. So it'll be free on the consumer side, uh, again, until September 30th, with then some restrictions being put in place past that. Um, but again, you can hop into your Gmail very soon. I believe it's rolling out the next few weeks or so. And you'll be able to, in your personal Gmail account, schedule and run Google Meets um, with friends and family and, and, and the like. But yeah, the, the Google Cloud blog is the best place to stay um, up to date on all of this kind of past this meeting. So let's take a tour of, of Google Meet. Um, I've structured this in, in kind of a fun way. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about the feature, and then there'll be a little bit more um, wordy slides that will actually have the individual steps to do this. Uh, the way that we're looking at this is this presentation will be shared with you um, after the, the call today. And so uh, if you did want to go back and say, hey, how did I do that thing that he was talking about? Um, they are structured. So, so please don't worry about reading every single word on the slide. I will skip over some of that. But it does give you um, the full instructions to go and take advantage of everything that I'm talking about. So um, the first thing we'll talk about is kind of meet best practices. Um, so I'm presenting my screen now, which is why uh, you can't see me. Um, but just some basic things to think about, right? No matter what video conferencing solution you're on. Uh, so one, um, you know, backdrop, choosing a, a plain backdrop um, is always uh, important so that folks aren't distracted. Um, the next one is uh, your laptop or whatever device you're, you're working off of, um, put it somewhere steady. Uh, I, I ran into this problem using an external um, webcam uh, earlier in my quarantine. It was starting to rock as I would type. So definitely, um, Try not to make your coworkers motion sick there. Someone called me out on that. Um, but then, yeah, just finding a kind of firm place to put that. Um, so noise, uh, this is always uh, an interesting one, right? So obviously, depending on your situation, um, trying to eliminate things like your, your dogs barking, people doing dishes, all that sort of stuff is always important. One cool thing to note that was released recently is um, our first uh, rollout of background noise um, uh, reduction. And so this is the idea that if you are taking notes on your keyboard, if the fans from your older uh, workstation are, are starting to whir up, um, we are looking uh, at those audio signals and actually trying to reduce that background noise. Uh, you know, I, I'm still hoping for the day that we can figure out how to eliminate dog barks. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of that kind of normal office background noise is starting to be reduced natively within the tool itself. So some of this is, is um, going to be less and less important. The next one is bandwidth. Um, so obviously, everyone's work from home situation is different. Um, however, uh, trying to figure out the best bandwidth situation that you can is always important. Um, things like potentially isolating your machine from others um, on your network, if you can um, set up two networks. Uh, also, within Hangouts itself, um, we have a number of kind of bandwidth saving tools. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then my favorite, right, turn your camera on. Um, as we mentioned kind of previously, uh, you know, such a strong culture here at Google of, of camera on and, um, and really something that you should consider uh, just kind of in, enhance engagement within your meeting. Um, so clicking and joining with one tap, right? Um, the idea here was to make this as simple as possible. So when I get a link, uh, I should be able to click on that and then click join after I confirm that, you know, I'm on the right camera, I'm using the right microphone, uh, and my hair looks OK. I should be able to click join and, and get into that meeting. Um, and what this basically boils down to is a few things. Um, when you're thinking about how you want to structure and, and set up your meeting, um, right? The, the most obvious uh, and kind of default is going to be Google Calendar. Um, so here, right, whenever you create a calendar invite, which we're seeing in this GIF right here, here, I think this user is actually even adding meeting rooms. But anytime you drag and create that calendar invite, uh, we are uh, creating a Hangout associated with that invite. Um, the other way that, that can be done, and I'll actually just hop over and show you, is that if you go to meet.google.com, right? Um, so again, soon in the, the consumer space, but if you're an enterprise user who already has this stood up, um, you can very simply 
click join or start a meeting. So from here, um, I would have that ability to say, go to, uh, let's call it that talk. And uh, basically, I can create this meeting on the fly. Now, what it's going to notice almost immediately, so hey, you'll see me here, um, is that uh, you know there's nobody else here, uh, and there was no one invited. So very quickly, you get this uh, this joining info. I can click here um, and share this out across whatever channels that might be, whether that's Google Chat or whatever um, you know chat application you're using internally already, uh, or even an email. Uh, and this will actually persist for, for some period of time. Um, and then you can also add people, right? So I can come in and add a, um, an email address here. Uh, this will, again, send an email-based invite or um, even uh, dial people directly. So you can dial folks into the call uh, as well. And I'm going to leave this running as we are going to hop back and forth as I talk about a few uh, additional features. Um, so here, from a bandwidth perspective, right, understanding that everyone's situation is different, and especially as we uh, have everyone in the home all trying to do different things, whether that's um, you know trying to do schoolwork or trying to get multiple people working at the same time, uh, bandwidth is at a premium. Uh, and so here, within the video tools themselves, uh, you do have that ability to both change your camera, um, change the resolution that you're sending out as, uh, and then also. Um, the, the band resolution, rather not bandwidth, um, that you're receiving um, those signals as. And so um, there's kind of two, two step downs here, right? By default, we want to make you look as good as possible. Uh, so we're going to, uh, by default, give you that high definition. Um, but standard definition is, is also great, especially as we uh, move to the Brady Bunch view. Uh, and then one that's been a lifesaver for me in certain locations is standard definition, but one at a time. And so one video at a time means that Google intelligently understands who's speaking at any given moment um, and will very quickly um, basically turn that video signal on. And then as the speakers change, uh, we'll rotate that out to try to save them. Uh, and then again, um, audio only uh, is an option as well for those incoming speakers. So this is again, um, you know, we're talking about noise cancellation. Um, the Brady Bunch view, as it's been now called, I think it's kind of its unofficial title. We actually call it Tiled View, um, has launched uh, across the, the um, Google Meet for Enterprise SKU. Uh, and so here, right, it's the idea of getting that four by four picture of all your participants in your call um, all at once. On top of that, we still are maintaining the traditional um, views here. So we have our, our auto layout, which will rotate based off of who's talking. Um, we have the tiled view, so kind of the main speaker, as well as the, the other two kind of on, on deck here. And then finally, the one that we're using today, uh, which is that spotlight view, um, which is great for presenting. Um, and then when you know video is not an option, and again, there's a number of reasons for this. Um, moving to uh, the, the call-in um, is, is super helpful. Um, and so here, there's kind of two ways to do this. Um, one is to use your phone for audio, right? So I've already joined the meeting, and for whatever reason, um, whether that's a bandwidth constraint, a mic restraint, can't figure out what setting that you uh, you clicked in your last call to, to mute yourself, um, you can come in and in this bottom sidebar, click, uh, you know, use a phone for audio. Um, and what this will do is either dial you or provide that link for you to dial in. And, uh, and then, of course, right, you'll have two participants in the call, your workstation or laptop or whatever is coming in, uh, as well as your cell phone. And if your phone number is in your um, is in the directory uh, for your G Suite instance, it'll actually even resolve back to your name uh, as well, which is uh, always kind of a, a, a cool thing when, when understanding who just joined instead of asking uh, who all these numbers are. Um, so again, easy way to kind of help with the call quality. Um, next, uh, sharing the, the right screen at the right time. Um, again, super important uh, and again, done all through the web. So here you can share your entire screen, um, just a window like what I'm doing now, um, or a Chrome tab. And um, the Chrome tab option is, is pretty cool. It's borrowing technology from our friends um, over on the Chromecast team. And what it effectively does is allows you to take that, that rich video content, audio content that's playing and we're going to cast it into the meeting as almost if it was another participant. 
Uh, and what we um, just launched as well as part of the, the four first new features for Meet during COVID is um, the ability to do a high quality audio and 30 frames per second video. Um, so what this means now is that if you're trying to watch a YouTube video collaboratively, if you're trying to share content, video content that's in Drive or any other kind of web-based um, file store, um, that will come through um, beautifully and, and everyone will see it without the kind of choppy lag that you may have seen prior. Um, and then along with that, right, like if you're going to start using um, you know, Hangouts and personally, you know, other video services will work through that as well, as long as they support um, that the casting functionality, which is uh, available in kind of any Chrome tab. So this is again requiring the Chrome browser for this for this Chrome tab casting, but it really helps enhance um, your calls as as the, the uh, content comes through crisply. Um, so here, uh, this is where uh, we kind of take a divergence from or divergence from. Um, some of the, the normal standard kind of video conferencing features and really leverage something that is truly unique um, to uh, Google Meet. Uh, and so this is where uh, live captions, and if you don't mind, the AV team turns those on now just to kind of show what that looks like. Um, effectively, uh, live captions are leveraging um, some of Google's uh, incredible research in uh, speech to text and AI. And so what we're doing here is taking um, uh, that same speech text technology and I'm making that available within the meeting itself. And so now what you should be seeing on screen is um, my uh, or my voice now turning into text. And you'll also see my, my nice little icon picture and my name. And so you'll actually almost get a full transcript as you're watching the meeting happen. Um, so for those that either for whatever reason can't use their speakers or have some sort of um, uh, need to, to read uh, opposed to listen, um, they're able to do that and just turn that on in the background. Um, for those uh, privacy conscious that this exists ephemerally in the Hangout itself, um, it's not written at all. Uh, it would only be preserved in the recording um, itself. Uh, but again, live captions are kind of an awesome example of, of Google's ML making it into um, all the different facets of the G Suite. Uh, and, and this uh, same technology can actually be leveraged in your own applications as well uh, on the GC or Google Cloud Platform side, which I, spent some time working on. Um, so then recording meetings for later. So this is something that we're um, doing for this call today, and it'll be available later. Um, but again, something that we do with a lot of different calls um, within Google. And so that's quickly just clicking that record uh, meeting button. What this will do is obviously record for, for the, the duration that you toggle this on. Everyone gets a, a warning, but whether you are going to join um, that call uh, or when the call's in progress, and then once that recording is done, um, instead of saving it locally um, to your device, uh, we want to kind of keep track of this chain of custody. And so what we do is actually write that file um, to your Google Drive. Uh, and so this is great for, for a number of time security reasons, right? It can be um, part of your, um, your compliance uh, posture. So within Google Vault, you can put retention rules around uh, those meet recordings. Um, and then you can also track who's it been shared with, who downloaded it, kind of everything that happens to that recording after the meeting is done. Um, so again, great feature, and then a lot of security and compliance controls around on the back end. Um, so then hosting meetings with up to 250 participants. So the, the default for, for Google Meets is 150. Uh, it's 250 um, in the enterprise SKU, but anyone um, who is leveraging Google Meet uh, now until September will have these 250 person meetings. Uh, again, no add-ons required, nothing nothing kind of um, substantial there. Just simply uh, make sure that that invite goes out to all those participants uh, and they can join a mute, uh, you know, talk um, and they're just a regular participant in the meeting. When we want to go past those 250, um, I, I've never been part of a meeting which will require, uh, you know, all 250 people to talk, um, you know, over the course of an hour, or two hours, whatever that is. Uh, so that's when we, we upgrade to, um, Google meets live streaming uh, capability. And so this is live streaming for up to 100,000 users. And uh, the key component here is this is gonna be users inside of your G Suite domain. So everyone who is say part of, uh, you know, Pied Piper or company XYZ, um, whatever that might be, um, you know, we, we lock that down uh, to that calendar invite. Um, and, and the reason being is, is we think of this as a kind of a security feature to, to lock this sort of thing down, only allow folks um, within the enterprise to, to view these types of meetings. 
And again, um, no additional uh, add-ons or plugins needed uh, as this GIF kind of restarts here. What we'll notice is when this meeting is scheduled in calendar, um, we're managing the details uh, and we're going to just add that live stream. It's gonna add a second calendar invite to your Google Calendar. Uh, and then from there, you can share that live stream link out with, again, up to 100,000 folks. So um, at that point, hopefully you have your Google Groups in order and you'll be able to uh, share that out with the right teams. Um, this is being used uh, every week by multiple teams that I work with here internally at Google, um, not just uh, during COVID, but, but actually uh, it's a standard practice as we have teams that are distributed around both the United States and the world. And so it's uh, a pretty rare that everyone gets together all at one, one time. Um, so as teams uh, can both log in um, to see the live stream uh, and then ask questions and do all that sort of stuff, um, but then also uh, can um, watch that recording later if it doesn't meet their time zone needs or if they're meeting customers or what have you. Um, the last thing I'll address, which is why we're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this on YouTube and why I'm uh, you know, using Hangouts Meet, is for those who need to go past either that 100,000 limit or need to um, uh, uh, display externally, sorry. Um, what we have is uh, kind of the ability to do this via YouTube Live. Um, and so here again, access to YouTube can be controlled uh, through the G Suite admin console. So for some number of folks, you can give them access to YouTube. Um, and then this would just simply require um, the use of um, OBS or Wirecast or a number of other partner tools, um, which allow for the capture of the Hangouts meeting and the streaming to YouTube. Um, there, and so that's, that's how we accomplish that uh, today um, in Google. And just to summarize, right, so as far as uh, thinking of Google Meet, right, um, it, it's a tool that can stand alone by itself. Um, and, and right, as we mentioned, right, it's not dependent necessarily on calendar, but you can use it in conjunction with that, with Gmail or not. Um, and again, it's kind of better with that doc sheet slides um, um, and usage, and then also uh, those meetings are shared to drive. It's important to note a few other things though, right? If you are um, an Outlook user, uh, we do have a very robust plugin for both Office 365 and the thick client on the desktop. Um, that allows for a drop down, and similarly to how I was able to just schedule a meeting or, or add one for later, um, it's right there, right? And you can throw that into an email, you can throw that into a calendar invite um, and continue to use Outlook. If you're thinking of doing a hybrid type environment where you continue to use uh, your mailing calendar on the Microsoft side and, and leverage Google for its robust co-editing and, and uh, video sharing and all of that. Uh, along with that, there are a number of other tools, say the Slacks of the world, um, where they actually have pretty robust plugins for Google Meets as well. Um, so just know that this is not an all or nothing type solution. Um, we are very happy to meet you wherever your pain points and needs are um, and, and really like to work with the, the community of other vendors that are out there. All right, so um, with that, right, we're now gonna dive a little bit more into um, the security side of the house as uh, that is so top of mind for folks today. Um, so first, we'll just talk about kind of Google's industry-leading security expertise, right? We, we think about this not just as the security of Google Meet, but really the security of the entire G Suite platform. And really, a lot of this extends out to a Google account in general. Um, and so really, when we think about the kind of secure by design infrastructure, right, all audio and video uh, data is encrypted um, in transit and at rest across Google. Um, again, you own your data, not Google. So when you do enter, um, enter into an enterprise agreement with Google, uh, you know Google is simply the data processor, not the controller. Um, so for those who are compliance minded, you probably know what that means. Um, and, and functionally, right, the idea is that we're just trying to facilitate the best meetings, the best documents that, that we can possibly provide to our customers. Um, the next thing, right, is, is big is gonna be um, our zero reported detected account hijacking with the advanced protection program. Um, so this is really a core tenant at Google. Everybody has security keys, whether that's uh, built into their device, as we can with, with a number of devices, or keys that we wear on our keychain. Um, and so we see an incredible amount of success when folks use this in tandem with our other security tools for our accounts, the Advanced Protection Program being one of them. What does that do? It enforces 
uh, the two-factor authentication via YubiKey. It also restricts um, the linking of Google accounts to untrusted applications. So it's like a whitelist, blacklist, um, so that you can't just go sign up for random services uh, with your Google account. And then also on the Gmail side, allows for, for deeper scanning for potential uh, phishing and malware. Um, and then uh, kind of to, to finish off here on sort of a meat perspective, right? We have a number of different uh, anti-hijacking uh, methods that exist both for the, the web meeting as well as the telephone dial-in. Um, so I'll kind of highlight a few of these. There's a reason why I'm using a separate meet so that no one tries to bomb this. Um, but effectively, what, what you'll notice here is when we're looking at my meeting in this window, you'll notice that there is nothing that indicates what the meeting name is. There's also nothing that indicates uh, what the dialing number is. Um, and that is by design. As I present my screen or if I'm looking you know, at myself uh, here, which, uh, what you'll notice is I, it takes me clicking down to here and then understanding that, hey, this is all the joining info. That's how I would actually get into the call. Same thing persists uh, in settings, but same thing is true um, for the dial-in here, right? So when I use that audio, again, it's not like go to this dial-in that it, it provides the PIN. Now, what's, what's interesting about this here is that the phone number and the PIN um, are rotated. Um, and so that means that uh, both, uh, we go through a number of different phone numbers. There's not just one phone number for uh, Hangouts Meet. Um, and then uh, same thing with the pins, obviously, that those are clearly rotated um, based off of the calls. All right. Um, so as I mentioned, right, um, all meetings, um, or all data in meetings are encrypted in transit, um, both between uh, the client and Google, and then between uh, Google data centers. Um, and then, of course, the recordings right, in Drive are encrypted at rest by default and in transit. This is a standard practice for all files that go into Drive. So there's really nothing special about those meet recordings when they're in Drive. They're treated as any other Drive object. Um, so this idea of a full encryption and key rotation um, is true for uh, anything that you put in Drive, whether that's um, that meet file, uh, the native docs in their format, or if you decide to put other content, whether that's uh, Adobe-based files, Microsoft-based files um, into to, to Drive, they all keep the same encryption and key rotation posture. Um, the next one is, right, so um, with Google being trusted by a number of enterprises around the world, uh, it's important, um, and you'll see this in, in language if you enter into an agreement with Google, um, that again, not only do you own your own data, and also we make it incredibly easy for, for you to get this data back out. So if you do decide to try, um, you know, Google Meet and use Drive and say, hey, this isn't for me. And um, we make it very easy to pull that content out, right? So whether it's obviously the Meet recording simply being MP4 files, um, but then in, in the instance of uh, your Google Docs, they'll all convert to an open office format so that you can use those um, with whatever vendor um, is right for you, right? And so uh, on top of that, right, Google in, in no way, shape, or form um, sells or processes any of that data for advertising. Um, uh, so again, um, we just try to make this as clear as possible. Um, you know, it is your data. We're simply allowing, uh, you know, the use of our tools, and you have all of them. Um, so we talked a little bit about this. I may have jumped the gun in that in that uh, demo there from the the high anti hijacking measures um, in, in, in telephone um, to prevent the brute force. But I'll talk about a few other uh, components outside of what you see within the UI. Um, it's important to note that for these meetings. Um, what we have set up is that uh, if you are on the calendar invite, right? So if I'm um, at google.com and I invite somebody from uh, you know, piedpiper.com um, and they're on that invite, then they can just join. But if that invite gets forwarded around the company or if someone shares that link with somebody else externally, um, they're only going to be eligible to tr attempt to join that meeting uh, 15 minutes beforehand. And then on top of that, they're going to have to write in either their name will autocomplete if they're joining with an existing Google account, or they'll have to provide uh, their name as well as a description for um, kind of why they're joining the meeting. Um, and then at that point, uh, anybody on the domain owner side, so anyone on the Google side, would be able to look at that, um, that request to join and then uh, confirm or deny um, that. So we're trying to limit um, the, the various ways that folks can, can hop into a call. Um, on top of that, right, uh, our meeting codes are 25 characters long. Uh, and so there, um, we're able to, 
um, really rotate through these um, quite robustly um, and becomes harder and harder to, to kind of guess. Um, and then finally, as I mentioned, right, the, the uh, phone numbers are rotating as well as the, the pins for dialing. All right. Um, so again, um, the secure deployment, right? We talked about this a little bit. Um, so no additional software needed for, for any of these browsers, right? There's no thick client to download. Um, there are occasionally plugins uh, for um, legacy browsers, but any recent version of um, Edge, Chrome, uh, Firefox, all totally supported. Um, and so there, right, you're, you're limiting the, the amount of software that needs to run on the device. So not only solving um, compatibility issues, but also any potential vectors for um, malicious activity to happen with an application that's actually running on the device, right? We, we limit all that to a single Chrome tab. Um, and then finally, right, uh, access transparency is a huge thing um, within Google, right? We want to make sure that you understand anytime a Googler accesses uh, something in your domain. And so how access transparency works is it's a tool um, in our uh, admin console which uh, coincides with any support ticket or requests that you might make for something not working or, or what have you. Um, and so if a Google employee needs to touch your instance for any reason whatsoever, um, the, the entire access process is completely categorized, logged, and, and you're um, able to uh, read that and, and be aware of that. And that's with our access transparency tools. Um, the other important thing to, to understand is that we do offer uh, data regions for Drive. So um, as you do think about using Drive more or recording these meetings, um, you're able to restrict where that data lives um, to both the, the US and the EU today. Um, and uh, since compliance is never the most fun thing in the world, I'm just going to touch on this very highly and we'll kind of skip to some more of the fun stuff. Um, but effectively, just understand uh, that we um, uh, do really take two things in mind. So, one, there's a lot of um, different uh, clients and regulations that we meet, right? So we're totally willing to provide um, our SOC reports. We are HIPAA compliant. We are FedRAMP moderate compliant and, and a whole other number of um, clients and regulations. What's interesting about Google is that we don't have the healthcare cloud that's HIPAA compliant and the government cloud over here. Uh, we believe that a rising tide floats all boats. And so um, in those instances where we have to make something more secure, we do that across the platform to meet whatever the highest level um, of regulation is. Um, if you are more interested in going into this, please reach out to your Google Cloud um, rep, and we can have a whole hour-long discussion about compliance, um, and it'll be a joy for everyone. Um, and last thing here, right? Obviously, um, reporting and incident management is super important, um, and so Google has uh, dedication to, to kind of meet with those and comply with everything such as GDPR. Um, we've been doing this for a very long time um, and so are, are very good at kind of working with, with folks when these uh, types of incidents arise. So finally, kind of getting out of the security realm, just talking a little bit about consistency and reliability. Um, Google maintaining its own uh, global network uh, allows for us to try to control as much of the traffic as possible, um, depending on kind of how you look at it, right? We're kind of one of the largest telcos as we um, control the, the network between all of our data centers um, and maintain an incredible num number of points of presence, um, which helps us uh, present this kind of an consistent experience no matter where you are. Um, and if uh, you kind of, not that you don't trust us, but if you would like to verify this, um, we have uh, some pretty comprehensive tool set uh, within what we call the meet quality tool. Um, and what this does as an uh, administrator of a G Suite instance gives you the ability to look at a holistic view of all the different meets um, that are happening across your organization and then get breakdowns of reports. So um, how long individual meetings lasted, what the average jitter was, packet loss, all those types of things. And then when you dive into an individual meeting, and I know it's a little small here, um, you get the meeting ID. If the meeting is taking place as an admin, you could actually hop into that meeting and help troubleshoot if a user is having an issue. Um, but if this is a support ticket or a complaint after the fact, um, you're actually able to go in and understand, hey, you know, this user uh, joined the entire team from their computer, um, another one joined by phone, you know, this user screen shared, and you will get a breakdown and understanding of what the issues might be, whether that's going to be something like um, 
someone not having an adequate device from a memory perspective or a bandwidth issue, you know, you can start to help troubleshoot and understand why um, why things are, are happening. Okay, so with that, um, probably going to take another five or so minutes um, just to talk about a few other features, and then um, we'll we'll go to questions as well as I see a few of them have come in. Um, so Google Docs, I would say this is probably the next most important thing next to meet um, as we have transitioned to work from home. Um, and so the big thing here uh, with Google Docs, right, is that uh, we are always on version now, as we like to say. Um, there is the ability to make copies and revisions, but we generally recommend against it um, as it allows for everyone to stay on the same page. Um, again, leveraging those Google accounts, which are using um, you know, some pretty sophisticated uh, methods from a login perspective. We're looking at a number of different things with our context-aware access tools, which again, really interesting thing to look into, um, which gives you the control to say, folks can only access um, certain parts of the suite based off of given parameters, whether it's being on the right device, whether it's being um, in the right uh, geography, um, really helps secure and lock down these accounts. And once you do that for the account, it's true across all the different products. Um, and then the ease for collaboration, right? If there's one cool tick or tip or trick that you learn during this, it's that you can do something, you can go to docs.new and instantly have a document up, right? Um, that's true for sheets.new, slides.new as well. Uh, it's a really fun trick. You can do that in your, in your browser. Um, and so from here, having a doc up, I can click share with anyone in my organization. I'm gonna share it, call tech doc, right? Boom, I can start to add, say, Tony here. Um, and I'm off to the races and we are working on something. I would say before every single meeting or within the first five minutes of the meeting, um, somebody is doing this. They're opening up a new document, they're giving it a name and they're saying, hey, let's take notes on this call. Um, and so within two clicks now, right, I can be working on something um, with another person and really helps both keep track of what's going on in the call um, and understand um, um, kind of, what's going to happen after that call as well. Um, and so I kind of jumped the gun here as I, I jumped out into that new slide. But again, co-editing, huge, um, huge kind of time saver uh, for um, users as they're kind of both using Meet and Docs in tandem. Um, comments and action items are huge as well. So uh, as you can see here, right, we have a few action items around the date. Um, we simply use a, a system of plussing somebody in, so hitting plus and then writing someone's name out. Um, we'll assign that to them. That sends them an email. Um, you can even give them this assign this as an action item, right? So not just bring awareness, but actually tell them they're on the hook uh, for um, updating something, presenting content, creating content, whatever that might be. Um, that in, in Gmail uh, is presented again in a, in a rich way where they can even respond to the comments directly um, in both the, the mobile and web application as well. Um, so again, great way to keep track of kind of what happened in that meeting. Um, and then finally, working on your time, right? And I think this is a huge thing um, given uh, the current situation, how everyone's working. Uh, you know, um, I think there was a, a great tweet that was like, you're not working from home, you're trying to work, get work done uh, during a crisis. And so I think what's important here is everyone's lifestyle has changed quite drastically. The idea of having everybody on a single document where they can work on their own time, whether that's early in the morning, late at night, it doesn't matter as long as they get their work done. Um, that's been a, a huge tenant at Google for a long time. And I think is really something that's truly beneficial as you no longer have to email around versions and think about um, you know, who has 2.2.1 or whatever that might be. Um, you can just get in and get your work done before the next time you're meeting, reconvening the projects do what have you. Um, and so then finally, once you have all this content created, right? You, you've net, you have your, your document built, it's in a state to share. I think Google Sites is really um, an underrated tool uh, within the G Suite platform and one that, that definitely is worth taking a look at. Um, we have a whole new template gallery, um, which allows you to not even have to think, really. It's just kind of filling in the blanks as far as the content. Um, it's built on top of Google Drive. So again, all of that, the encryption, the key rotation, all of that um, is true. Uh, and then you're able to quickly insert content from Drive in there. So it, again, it's using the same permissioning and Apple's really easy to make sure that everyone has access to the content. And it really just gives it a nice structured home. And so here, um, one of the, the newer things that came out um, just last week, I believe last Friday, 
is announcement banners. This was something that we actually put together here um, at Google a few weeks ago um, as we were starting to think about work from home strategies and what have you. Most of the primary Google sites um, that we use internally as an intranet had these banners in yellow that said, hey, don't forget to click here for the latest on work from home policies, how you, how you, um, you know, request equipment if you need that. All those types of things became front and center on all of our internal sites. And so it became easy to bring um, that kind of to, to folks' attention. Uh, templates, like I mentioned, pop up here. We can see even here, right, we have this event, the help center, uh, a team page, a portal, right? So if I click here on, say, this event one, we're now creating a site. This, again, is something easy. Anybody in the organization can do that, given the permissions. Um, kind of a fun story here is uh, we had a, a new director who recently joined Google from another organization um, and reached out to, to myself and my manager and said, hey, um, you know, what's the turnaround time for a new site for all of the customer engineering specialists? i uh, really like to have this done by the end of the quarter. And so, uh, you know, took his requirements and all that. And I had it uh, the, the skeleton done um, in about two to three hours because of using one of these templates and just kind of filling in that content. It's not the understanding that you have to stand up, you know, a traditional internet site and run a server and all of that, right? This is all just living in Google Drive. It's simple, it's easy. You can drag and drop. It truly is a what you see is what you get editor, um, like you might see on some consumer type tools. And then you can quickly click drive and insert any of the content that you may have been working on, whether that's you know uh, documents, meeting recordings, all, all of that, right? Um, which segues nicely into uh, one of kind of our best practices here at Google is all of our all hands, all of our team meetings that are recorded um, for at least some period of time do go into a drive folder. And then we use these things called drive lockers, which effectively have a number of different files. And I think this might actually even have um, some meeting notes here, um, which allow us to then uh, go back and watch at our leisure, right? If we missed the meeting or, or didn't need to present in that. Um, you can come back and understand kind of what's going on with the organization. Again, once this is simply set up with a, a team meetings, you know, this is some text. This is inserting the most recent meeting. And then anytime someone drags and drops that that meeting um, file into that folder, the site is updated. It's done. Um, so again, really something to keep in mind as you're thinking about uh, the rest of the suite. So with that, I know it was a lot, um, but I, I think we're going to go to some a few Q and A. Rob, yeah. before we go into QA, uh, thank you very much for the presentations mm -hmm. uh, outstanding. Um, I just wanted to reemphasize with our customer today uh, joining us that until September 30th, Google, in order to help you and serve you better, is giving to your entire organization Meet for free. Uh, so this is a, a great opportunity. So I really encourage you to reach out to your account executive and your account team at Google. And if you want to uh, access to uh, our solution immediately for your entire organization, this is ready. Thank you. So we can switch to the to the first question on the, on the chat now. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and definitely a great time to take advantage kind of everything that I mentioned today uh, will be part of that. that uh, yep. So. Um, how do we stream from Meet to YouTube without accounts in the same organization? Um, so I think that um, the YouTube component is how we do that, right? So there is the um, you know traditional Meet with up to 250 people, and then there is the the built-in Meet live stream, right? So as we showed, um, that's how you do that directly within Google Calendar. Um, the way that you uh, take a Meet and do it uh, and send it to YouTube. Um, is a little bit more of a process. I will be um, completely honest about it. Um, but if you look at how YouTube does uh, live streaming, there's a number of different tools that exist out there. Um, OBS is an open source tool. Um, that's OBS, just uh, I know I said that a little quickly. Um, and that allows you to capture one screen and present that to YouTube. Um, Wirecast is another one that I've, I've, um, I know YouTube recommends, which is a, a more robust and enterprise friendly one with allows for multiple camera switching and, and all of that as well. Um, so there's a number of different tools that facilitate live streaming to YouTube. Um, and that's how we kind of go about, about that process today. Um, so, so right now, it is, it's not a one-click uh, stream to YouTube. There is a little bit of an intermediary, um, but, but definitely is possible. Um, OK, uh, how to have a video of the speaker as well as the presentation on YouTube when streaming from Meet. 
Um, so that would be uh, based off of, so assuming that you go through the steps that I, that I mentioned before, right? You're using one of those um, kind of casting services to bring um, the signal to YouTube. Um, that would be dependent on um, the layout that you choose to use uh, within the uh, meet itself. And uh, if someone from the AV team, if you want to play with it at this point, I think we already have the slides shown. So if you want to show what that looks like, if you're able, um, that would be cool. Um, but uh, uh, you can have a, a view where effectively the, the content is presented kind of in the um, majority of the screen with some uh, windows on the right hand side. Um, which would show uh, both the speaker as well as a number of kind of uh, users that are on the call. Okay, um, two questions. Uh, one, uh, where slash how big the video file can be stored if recorded. Uh, second, is there an audio transcription feature? Um, so effectively, um, what your uh, there is no limit to how big the video can be outside of the native drive limits that um, a file could be no larger than five terabytes. Uh, that's terabytes with a T. Um, if you have a video file that's, that's that large, um, I might be a little surprised. Um, and definitely a meet recording, um, which the recordings are last up to eight hours, um, would not uh, hit that limit. Um, so, so you should be covered there. Um, the audio uh, transcription is not uh, a separate file. Um, what you would see is the, the way that it's being presented right now, where you can see kind of my text coming up um, below, uh, would still persist in that recording, um, but it wouldn't uh, be like a separate Google Doc that you would, you would see there. Um, the last thing that I'll just kind of point out around the large file question um, too is as uh, if content stays, um, within Google Drive, um, right? You're not actually moving that file back and forth. You're just um, giving or moving access. So for larger video files, whether they're um, files that are going to exist uh, from a meet recording or for other use cases, whether you're doing video editing or what have you, um, it becomes a really easy way to share that content back and forth without having to use a, a traditional like, file server to send, send content. Um, and then, uh, okay, so is this free now uh, for regular users, uh, which is key? And if so, uh, what are the usage criteria nowadays? So I'll answer this in two parts. Um, one, if um, you are an existing G Suite user or take care of or um, take advantage of the, the promotion that Ingrid um, is mentioning, right? Um, at that point, you would have your own Google uh, or G Suite domain. Um, and so everybody in that obviously has access to you. Taking it a step further, if I invite an external participant, whether they have a Google account or not, um, then uh, effectively what would happen is that user is able to access the meeting regardless of whether they have a, uh, a Google account, right? So um, from that perspective, right, you would just be able to log in, again, present your name, and you can access. Finally, um, the newest version that announced this morning, the component that's part of Gmail um, is kind of available for all. So you would just need a, um, you just need a Gmail account, right? And you would have access. Um, and so there then two folks with a Gmail account can, can have a Google Meet back and forth. Um, so one of the limitations uh, announced this morning as part of the, the free consumer offering is that it has to be, um, Google uh, to Google accounts on the call. Um, we're not going to have external access there as we stand today. Um, so yeah, just to recap there, it, uh, if you're an enterprise and you're trying to invite third parties, um, it is free. Any regular user, and I'll define regular user as someone who doesn't have a Google account, um, can join. Um, but within the consumer version, it does need to be a Google account to a Google account. There we go. And uh, just to, to clarify on, on SF's question there, um, so uh, due to your point about having to have Google Drive to begin with, um, the way that we have gone to market with Google Meet is it always comes accompanied with Google Drive. Um, so uh, it's not a um, upgrade or, or something that you have to pay for additionally to record the meetings, um, no matter what, as long as you allow your users to have access to Drive. Um, as an admin, uh, you would have both those in tandem there. Okay. Thank Fun you. Stuff.
see anything else coming on the chat. So I'll hand it back over to the team. Thank you very much. So thank you everyone for your very informative question. So we hope that this session was helpful in understanding meat and how we can benefit your organization. So we'll also like to invite you to join us next week uh, with uh, site reliability engineer Cindy Quartz and Betsy Bayer uh, to have a conversation around Google SRE best practices. So we'll share registration link for both talks in our follow-up email, which will include the slides from the presentation of today from Rob and the feedback form. So we value your feedback and we appreciate you taking the time. And the goal is really uh, helping us to serve you better. So thank you for joining Google Cloud today. And uh, I wish you a safe and a great week. Talk to you soon.